Hi, it's Robin here. So, at this time, it's more important than ever to relax your mind, to relax your fucking head. And so, with that in mind, with that in your relaxed mind, I have created some guided meditation for you to try out. Now, you might notice that my guided meditation is a little bit different from more conventional meditation practices because mine deals largely with going to pubs. Pubs are sadly absent from our lives at the moment, so what I've done is I've created a space for you here, online, on the internet, whatever, where you can go for a beer. A beer of the imagination, if you will, in the pub garden of your soul down the gilded avenue of your... Well, you get the idea. Before we get started, I've been enjoying reading a collection of short stories uh, called Pond by Claire Louise Bennett at the moment, and uh, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to quote a little extract from it. And we're hearing a lot of bird song at the moment because the city is so much quieter. And uh, I don't know if you ever noticed the way wood pigeons coo. You know, a wood pigeon, it kind of goes, oh, ho, 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 ho. Got that little bit at the end there. It's quite strange. But nowadays I've noticed wood pigeons are doing this. Ho, 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 ho. And another one. So they're now doing four, which is uh, crazy. And um, you yeah, know, I don't know if it's linked to world events or not, but um, I'm enjoying it. Anyway, let's get on. And uh, this is a lovely bit from Pond. It's just about birdsong. And then, after lunch, I'd take a blanket up to the top garden and I'd lie down under the trees in the top garden and listen to things. I would listen to a small beetle skirting the hairline across my forehead. I would listen to a spider coming through the grass towards the blanket. I'd listen to a squabbling pair of blue tits seesawing behind me. I'd listen to the wood pigeon's wings whack through the middle branches of an ivy-clad beech tree <laughs> and the starlings on the wires overhead and the seagulls and swifts much higher still and each sound was a run that took me further upwards and in this way it was possible for me to get up really high to climb up past the clouds towards a bird-like exuberance where there is nothing at all but continuous light and acres of blue. Anyway, on with the meditation. All you need to do is switch your mind on and take your shoes off because you will need to lie down. So relax, drift off, and think of pubs. Cheers! So, to begin with, let's go for a walk to a pub. The pub we're going to today is the Duke of York in St. Werburgh's Bristol. If you want to imagine another pub, please do. Use whatever town is most verdant or fecund in your head, although Bristol does tend to work best. The anticipation builds, delayed gratification, the dry throat, the parched mouth, how feverishly doth the pint appear in your mind's eye. This from Pond again. Anyhow, I don't mind waiting. Waiting was a pleasure, in fact. Anticipation, when it occurs, often makes me animated and expansive, as if I am perhaps reviving and honing my senses in preparation for the awaited object. Yes, indeed, the world is a scintillant and fascinating place, when a half-remembered mystery leans within reach. I mean, I don't think she was writing about pints there, but uh, you, know, you get the idea.
So we're really striding through the streets of Bristol now, down Ashley Downhill, towards the pub. The pub. The pub. The pub. Sorry, I forgot how long it takes to get there, actually. Getting quite tired now. Okay, let's turn left and head through the allotments. As dusk darkens the sky and the early evening stars appear. And the lights of St. Werburgh's become gradually visible. The village within the city, past the city farm, under the bridge, and the streets open up. I actually can't find this bloody pub. Where is it? Is it, is it down there? Or is it? I can't remember. But isn't it true that all the best pubs are neither here nor there? They nestle between realities, lost in the cityscape. The best pub is the one we'll never get to. The one that's on the horizon, perpetually beyond reach. Oh, actually there it is. It's over there. Just around that corner there. Look at it. A bejeweled pub, glimmering in the dusk like a pub. Let's go in, shall we? <laughs> Dimly lit, brass furnishings, dark wood. Why don't you order a beer? Find a quiet table. Why do pubs not have beer mats anymore? Have you noticed that? Weird. I'd like to quote a little bit from James Joyce's Ulysses here about pubs. Miss Deuce's brave eyes, unregarded, turned from the cross blind, smitten by sunlight, gone. Pensive, who knows, smitten, the smiting light. She lowered the drop blind with a sliding cord. She drew down, pensive, why did he go so quick when I, about her bronze, over the bar, where bald stood by sister gold, in exquisite contrast, contrast in exquisite, non-exquisite, slow, cool, dim, sea green, sliding depth of shadow. Eau de Nil. No, don't understand any of that, but uh, it's very nice. Have a sip of your pint. And I've put some space here for you to really imagine an ice-cold lager cascading down your throat. Or a delightful room-temperature ale. Or a non-alcoholic beverage, whatever you want, I don't care. Now to imagine sitting quietly, reading a book, or chatting to a friend. Do what you want. Like I said, I don't care. Why not imagine it all while listening to some relaxing guitar music?
My website address is robinallender.bandcamp.com. That's robinallender.bandcamp.com. Let's head out to the garden, shall we? I can't remember if the Duke of York actually has a beer garden or not, but uh, for the sake of this, it definitely does. Listen to the crickets. Admittedly, unusual in Bristol, but still very relaxing. A wooden table in a pub garden in the gloaming. How's that pint going down? Ah, you've started checking your phone. Looks like someone has said something annoying on Twitter. Don't reply. Oh, you have done. Well, just forget about it now. No, you've picked your phone up again. Okay, let's get back to the pint. Let's get back to the pint. The pint tastes like all love all beauty, and you take one last swig. You can hear a train in the distance, and as Paul Simon once sang, everybody loves the sound of a train in the distance. Everybody thinks it's true. Very nice. Sadly, all things must pass, and now the pint is finished, and it's time to go home. Take your pint glass back to the bar, please. Don't be a bastard. Walking home now, back through the darkling lanes, through the twilight, listening to the owls, listening to the nightingales. Again, unusual for Bristol, but bear with me.
and now to bed. But the pub will live on in your head, in your heart, in your soul. There, so I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you're feeling a touch more relaxed. I'll see you all soon for another instalment. Um, until then, cheers, and uh, make mine an imaginary pint. <laughs>